Stories are Unintended Consequences My name is Asadumebi, and every week I will tell you a short story written by a Nigerian writer or author. That's the long and short of it. So without much ado, this week's story is by Ibukun Olua Femio, and it's titled The Surprise. My bunkmate, Jomiloju, interchanged Jela for Senior Charity's name as she hummed the chorus of Asa's Jela. Senior Charity's duty for her that Friday afternoon was to update all her class notebooks with her fine handwriting. Senior Charity never completed her notes till they were due for submission and grading. Jomiloju told me that Senior Charity would fail her Wayek exams. <laughs> that one, she will be unable to write anything in the booklet. She has become so used to giving junior girls her notes to update. She doesn't know anything. Yet, she'll be forming fine girls for the boys in her class. I told Jumiloju that her own task was an easy one. After all, she wrote fast and she would complete her task in no time at all. Me. <laughs> I had to spend my entire siesta sneaking out of the room every half hour, stealthily avoiding the dormitory prefects who were on patrol, only so that I could check that Senior Rulake's clothes had not been stolen from the lines, unless she would punish me for the loss. I had washed all her dirty clothes, sweating intensely under this hot sun, including all the pairs of her famously stinky socks. Senior Charity barged into our room. Where is that girl? Where is that useless junior? Jomiloju? Jomiloju, come out here now! Where is the bucket of water I asked you to fetch? Senior Charity, my hand is paining me. I can't carry anything. I've been writing the notes you gave me since. I've not even rested since we left class. I've not even fetched my own water. I cringed at the thought of what could happen to Jumiluju. She was sparking for Senior Charity. Hey, God. Is it me you're talking to? How dare you talk back to me from your bed? Will you come down here right now? Right this very minute? I'm going to count to five. If you are not on your knees when I'm through, you will be in soup. In her kindness... Senior Charity had counted slowly. But Chumiloju was bent on wearing this senior's patience thing. Leave it. Senior Charity charged towards our bunk and dragged Jomiloju down. Before we knew what was happening, Jomiloju began to gasp. I knew she suffered asthmatic attacks from time to time. But this was unlike anything we had ever seen. I jumped off the bed and I ran to her locker for her inhaler. Our housemistress had gotten wind of the ruckus and had turned up. Clear the way, clear the way, clear the way, clear the way. We are taking her to the sick bay immediately. When I return, I will address this foolishness. She maneuvered her large frame through the crowd that had gathered in our room. By Sunday, Jomiloju's mother, Ibanka, had flown in from Abuja. She was here to take Jomiloju home to be seen by their family physician. I walked Jomiloju to our school gate, carrying her bag with me. I was going to miss her. Her and her sharper than razor mouth. We had already started calling her Jomiloju Dispaka. Hey, Homa, please, help me watch over my locker. And don't listen to Mary when she asks to borrow my bar soap, you hear? She will not return it till it is flat. <coughs> and then, <coughs> and then she will not come and start begging somebody to not be offended. <coughs> she managed to say, her voice barely audible. And as for Senior Charity, <laughs> I'll be surprised for that one. Jomiloju, don't tell me you want to report her to your mommy. Oh. She's already in big soup in the dormitory. Mistress Hannah has already given her a whole week of punishment. Report, girl. <laughs> 
<coughs> I will not report her. <laughs> well, my surprise is better than that. She replied, grinning, as we hugged and bade our goodbyes. On Monday morning, on my way to the assembly ground, Senior Charity caught up with me. She looked disheveled. Ihoma, I lend you our Jomiloju's bunkmate. She was with all my notebooks, and I am meant to submit all of them today for grading. Did she leave them with you before going home? I was too shocked to reply, and I shook my head from side to side, indicating a no. As I bolted to join my class line, Asa's jailer replied in my mind, If you're walking in the marketplace, don't throw stones. Even if you do, you just might hit one of your own. Born in Lagos, Nigeria, Ibukun Olua Femio is a creative writer who enjoys the art of weaving heart-crafted stories into prose and poetry. You can read more of her work on Camwood Carrots and connect with her on Instagram at ibukun underscore regales. Details and links will be in the episode description. If you've got a story you would like to be featured on this podcast or a published book you want to make into an audiobook, send an email to info at osadumebi.com or send me a message at osadumebi on either Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn or X, formerly Twitter. I look forward to collaborating with you. And if you've enjoyed this week's episode, please subscribe, leave a review and tell a friend that stories are a good escape for a few minutes each week.